language barrier, if the person is French or Spanish or some other language, then I can't communicate. So lack of being able to communicate is another reason. What's another reason? If they're far away, they're they're very far away, there's too much distance involved. I need to communicate. Hey, come closer. I need to talk to you. Come here. Another reason related to what you said, they're in a vehicle backing up. What's the problem there? There's an obstacle between you and them, and it may be a window. They may be looking at you, but there's an obstacle between us. And so I can see your lips moving, but I can't hear what you're saying. And so you're going to use communication skills. Let's turn the page to the one that shows hand signals. This is a pretty universal thing. Before you back up a pickup, you would want to communicate with whoever the operator is on how you're going to explain what you want them to do. If you want them to turn right, then you're going to want to point to the right. And so if I'm pointing like this and I want them to go right, he's going to be kind of confused. And so you need to communicate, what does this mean? That means go right, this means go left, even though I'm saying the opposite. And so you need to communicate so he knows what that means. Looking at these that are listed here, the first one says speed up. And so basically they're going like this, or they use a point. So, so speed it up or slow it down. And so they use two different ones here. They have their hand crasped, um, clasped, so speed it up, or speed it to slow it down. And so if you see people on a roadside that are um, controlling traffic and they want you to slow down, that's the universal hand sign, slow down. So I don't ever see them going like this, but they do this a lot. A lot of times they have a mean face too, but I don't know. Raise equipment. If I'm operating or, or working with someone that's running a loader and I want them to lift the load, I tend to tell them that my hand will be the bucket. And I want you to raise the load. If I want them to dump the bucket, I'm going to say dump the bucket, roll the bucket back, roll it forward, lift it up or lower it down. And that's why I don't use this for speed it up or slow it down, is because I use raise it up this way. But I communicate with whoever I'm talking about. If I go like this, it means raise the bucket. If I go like this, it means dump the bucket or roll the bucket back. Stop. Stop, you see police officers go like this. If I want someone to stop, I just clasp my hand and say stop. And so hold fast, stop. So this. Two different things that people use for stop, either this or this. And it's pretty universal, and most people use that. Or, actually, that's on the next page. This is stop. I may not want you to kill the engine, but I want you to stop. If I want you to shut it off, then it's the slicing of the throat. Kill it. Shut it off. So don't mix those two. Start in the engine. Twisting in the finger like you're turning the key. Come to me or go away. So most people use these. The point is, before you get into a situation where the person can't see or hear you, communicate what your hand signal is going to be, especially if you're working in tight corners with loud equipment. Make sure that when you make a motion, he understands what that is. Most of you guys are going to work either on a golf course or in a landscape business. And anytime you're in those industries, you're going to be around flowers and grass and insects. And before I started teaching here, I didn't realize there was very many people allergic to bees. And since then, every single year I've been here, I've had it between one and four people in my class every year that were allergic to bees. There's a lot of people allergic to bees. And so to, for you to understand, what are the symptoms? In this building, when I first moved here, we had yellow jackets, like swarms of them. And I finally was able to spray them out enough. But we've had two people get stung in here just in the time I've been here in this class. And luckily, the people that got stung, I've only had one person that was allergic to it. And they had their own medication to take care of them. There's three different reactions to bee stings. One is the one most people know, which is localized swelling. Maybe your hand swells up. It itches really bad, and it's kind of irritating, but not a big deal. 
The second one is when the swelling leaves the site. The whole entire arm might swell up or your leg might swell up. And so it's more severe. You see swelling beyond the site. Um, it could last for days. Uh, usually this takes place, if your whole arm swells up, it might last for a whole week. That's some pretty, pretty severe reaction. The third one, which is the one that you need to know the most about, is they'll go into shock. There's people that are allergic. I have an uncle that's allergic. If you don't get him to a doctor or get him a shot, within 15 minutes, he'll die. So what happens is their body swells up and their neck swells up and it suffocates them and their respiratory and everything kind of just goes into shock and their body shuts down. And they have a very limited short period of time before they need to get to a doctor or get medical attention. Those kind of people hopefully know who they are and know where they can get access to a, a B shot that um, counteracts it. But there are people out there that don't realize it. I had an uncle that's allergic to bees but wasn't. He used to have honeybees and he would get stung every day. He never wore a mask, he never wore gloves, and he would work with the bees, just walk out and work with them, and he gets stung multiple times every day. And one day he was driving down the road, a bee flew in the window, stung him in the arm. He went into shock. The neighbor found him and got him to the hospital and saved his life. So he went from being able to get stung multiple times to being so allergic to bees that if he got stung once and didn't get a shot, he would die. And he got stung twice and went into shock, and they saved him just before he died. So you can change. You can go from one of these to a different one. So when you talk about first aid kits, that should be in somebody's first aid kit if you work on a golf course or in the landscape industry. It's something to keep in mind that if you're not allergic to, don't pay attention to.